All right, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for an opportunity to come before your presence tonight. Those contemplating coming on, those that will watch it later, we ask that there be truth tonight. Our hearts are prepared to hear from you, from the word. Remove me, remove all of us from this equation. Let the spirit of God have his, pre have his preeminence in and through the speaker, the speakers, the hearers, and the listeners. We ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. You know, I, was, um, I want to talk about the importance of the word of God in our lives. And many times believers they i don't i don't know if everybody knows how to get the word of god in them you know when you read the psalms the proverbs that's one of the best ways to get the word of god in you you know with the psalms and the proverbs because those deal with real life situations and they give answers you know because i believe the verse says the entrance of his word give it life you know it makes you know wise the simple so to get the proper word of god in us it has to be a teaching word um, an exhorting word um, let's go there. We'll come back to Matthew 20, 24. Look at this. Um, exhortation. Because when we, you know, depends on where, it depends on your study habits. Like you might be looking for something, but then there's just times where you just probably just need um, to just read, you know, just to relax and get some uh, comfort, exhortation. So there's a verse in here regarding exhortation. All right, here we go. Let's look at this. Now, when you're, when, like, say, for example, and this, you know, you can judge this, and I might not come up perfect, but when you're preaching the word, right, when you're preaching the word, it usually um, has these three things, edification, exhortation, and comfort. So usually when the word of God is preached, you should usually be edified by what you hear, exhorted by what you hear, or comforted. So let's 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 read this. First Corinthians chapter 14. Let's start in verse 2. But he that speaketh in an unknown tongue. Listen, let me just pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I ask that you teach to me and teach to me. We receive a tangible healing and teaching of life in Jesus. Amen. Now look what it says. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. Now let's 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 hold on a second. Let's go to this full chapter. All right. Now, a lot of times believers. So, yeah, I shouldn't say a lot of times, but sometimes believers are not aggressive in getting the things that they really, really need from God. Now, what I mean by that is the Bible says the kingdom, the kingdom of God suffers violence, right? In other words, the word suffer means allow. And the word, in, oops, who knocked me on the floor? And the word violence means forceful entry. In other words, the kingdom of God allows people to forcefully enter into it, being aggressive, 
not timid and saying, you know, whatever, you know, praise God. No, you're not going to get anything with a whatever, praise God. You have to be aggressive, aggressive when it comes to the things of God. You know, and the Bible gives us permission to be aggressive. And so when you find that you're spiritual and that you are a blessing, now a blessing means um, something that can empower. Like say, for example, somebody wanted to bless me, right? That means they will do something to me or for me that will change where I am to someplace better. I'll, I'll do it one more time. A blessing changes you from where you are to someplace better. So when you realize that you're a spiritual person, you have the desire to be a blessing. To bring or to, to want to bring people to a better place. See, we are the body of Christ and we have gifts. Now, anybody ever got a Christmas present or a birthday present? Anybody out there ever got a gift? Yes. Yes. Did it bless you or did you like get very upset that you know you, you got that? And blessed. Blessed, happy. Right. Blessed and happy. Right. It, it changed where you were. So when you're looking at being spiritual, you have to look at two things. I'm spiritual and it's changing where I am. Because my spirituality is a gift. So it has changed me from a regular person to a child of God, a spiritual person. So I, I am blessed. Now you got to understand the definition of blessed, right? It's changing where you are, changing you from where you are to a better place. So when you got saved, God made you spiritual, he changed you and I from a natural place to a spiritual place. That is our well, part of our blessing, right? And it was a gift. Salvation is a gift from God, right? So he blessed us with it. We didn't deserve it. We didn't earn it. He gave it to us and it changed us. So I want tonight, as we talk about the word of God, we need to recognize that you, you, you are a potential blessing, but you got to want to be a blessing. You know, you have to want to be a blessing. You you have to be aggressive. You know, it's like, um, what was her name? Ruth? Ruth was aggressive when she wanted to become, um, what's that dude's name? Oh, Darlene's here. Darlene, what's that rich dude's name that Ruth got to marry her? Joab, nope. who's his name? Boaz. 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 See, she was aggressive in her, her move. She's a woman hanging out with drunk men, takes this guy's shoes off his feet, puts her stomach, possibly her stomach, on his feet. And all these drunk men sleep and he wakes up and he sees this woman laying on his feet as a sign of total submission. This woman was bold and she was telling this man, I will be a gift to you. See, she was what? Aggressive. You know, um, a lot of young women, they're taught not to be aggressive, but I believe if a woman sees a man, like a real man, that is 
uh, able to sustain her as a husband. Now, you know what a husband is? A husband is a man that has a vineyard, has a, um, a garden that is his, and he can take care of it and everyone in the garden. That's what a husband is. The Bible says God is a husbandman. You know, in other words, God can take care of us. So a husband means I can take care. So I believe if a woman sees a man that can be a husband, I don't think it's wrong for her to be aggressive by showing this man that she can be a wife. Now, if they're not attracted to each other, then don't do it. And I'll show you that, right? Yes. Now, if this guy got three knots, you know, on his nose and she she don't like that, don't leave him, don't leave him alone, you know? <laughs> but Ruth, Naomi told Ruth, do this. And she went and she did it. And she got Boaz and David came out of that. <clears throat> I think David came out of that line. So she told, this is what I'm trying to get at. You, when you study the word of God, you have to study the word of God with purpose. Like it, you want the word of God to bless you and you want it to turn you into a blessing. You know, so um, this is what it says. Follow after love, charity, excuse me, and desire spiritual gifts. So I want you to see this. And if you write notes or if you can remember this, remember that every spiritual gift in your life is for somebody else's benefit. And sometimes <clears throat> it's your benefit. Now, I believe you can speak in tongues, which is a spiritual gift, and you will benefit. You can prophesy over your life and you will benefit. You know, so you, the same way the gifts will operate for others, they can also operate for you if you get into the spirit and God starts to drop it on you for you. All right. Darlene, you up or you 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 iron it? She iron it. All right. Verse one. I'm here. How are you today? I'm okay. Um I can't see your screen. <laughs> you have you have your glasses. You have your glasses in your Bible or no? I got my glasses with my Bible. What, what is that? What verse is that? First Corinthians 14. Oh, okay. Yeah, you've seen that. You've seen that in the Bible before, right? First Corinthians 14, I guess. Um, the whole thing, first, 14 or 13? 14. First Corinthians 14, verse 1 to 4. Well, 1 through 5. One through five, amen. Follow after spiritual gifts. Excuse me. Did it, did, it, did it say that? Take your time. Follow Take after time. follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto man, not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him. Howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. But he that prophesieth speaketh unto men to edification to, and ex exhortation and comfort. He that speaketh in another he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, but he that prophesieth edifieth the church. For I would that ye all spake with tongues but rather that ye prophesied, for greater is he that prophesieth than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret that the church may be, that the church may receive edifying. Amen. So let's look at these verses, and this is the Apostle Paul, and he's saying, you know, follow love. You know, make sure you love people. 
not just saying it. You know, it's got to be demonstrations. Love has to be demonstrated. You got to be there for people. You know, you got to do something. If it's love, you have to do something, right? And so when you look at verse 2, he says, For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men, excuse me, unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understands him, howbeit in the spirit he speaks mystery. Now, if you have the gift of tongues, right? If you have the gift of tongues, you should know that I need to pray in an unknown tongue if. I want to talk to God. I I I don't think anybody taught me this, but I anybody ever heard about math? Anybody know what math is? Yes, amen. Hey Donovan, is math what is what's your favorite subject? What's your strong subject? Science, math, reading, like reading, history and psychology. Okay. So you're not a math major type person. All right. So math. Is um, <laughs> somebody said one plus one equals two? <laughs> All right, so if you so <laughs> Kamala, <laughs> all right, so Kamala, if a person understands math that one plus one equals two, that means there is a blessing, there is an addition. So if you speak in tongues. And you're not speaking to men, but unto God. How often do you really want to talk to God? So nobody taught me this, but I learned this mathematically. If I'm talking to God with his language, then Satan doesn't know what I'm talking about. But if I'm talking to God in my language, then Satan knows what I'm talking about. And Satan will have a better chance of hindering my prayer if I'm praying with the understanding. Anybody understand that as a mathematical Amen. equation? Amen. Amen. But most people don't pray in tongues. Sometimes they just speak in tongues. Right? They spoke in tongues. God understood them. But they didn't, you know, they didn't understand what they said. But there will be even an edification in them. They will feel better just speaking in tongues. Now, further down, Paul begins to talk about praying in tongues. Darling, read that. Read, um, read verse uh, 13 through 15. Um, 13. Wherefore, let him that speaketh to speak, let him, wherefore, excuse me, Verse 13, wherefore let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he might interpret. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? I will pray with the spirit and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the spirit and I will sing with the understanding also. All right, so you see, you can speak in tongues and you can pray in tongues. Many times when we're in church and the spirit of God falls, a lot of times people begin to feel like speaking in tongues. And it feels good. Can you imagine going to a prayer meeting where everyone was praying in tongues? There would be no confusion. Usually in a prayer meeting, a good prayer meeting, 
a person is praying with the understanding and everyone else is praying in unknown tongue. Connecting. And I, I believe this. I believe if somebody's praying and you're listening and you're agreeing, that's beautiful. That's agreeing. But I don't think you'll be as strongly edified had you spent time praying in tongues while that person was praying with an understanding. See, because you, you have to understand that tongues is a spiritual gift to edify yourself, to build you up. It says this, verse 2, For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understand them, howbeit in the spirit he speaketh this mysteries. Imagine you speaking in tongues, but you're having a wonderful conversation with God, and God's telling you how he created the world, how the world's coming to an end, what's going on in America, what's going on in Russia. You know, I remember a couple of years ago, God gave Darlene Chinese as a tongue. It could have been a spiritual tongue, but she had the diction of Chinese. You remember that, Darlene? Still happens. Yes. And you see, and you know, and you got to remember when tongues first fell on the church, they were all Jewish. So the first tongues was different languages. See, somebody say different. Different. See, different languages mean that it's an earthly tongue that you can receive. But here, Paul is now in this talking about the spirit. He says, For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men. This is not, you know, Russian, you know, African, Indian. This is an actual language between that individual and God. Now, if you wanted to be blessed, I mean, talking about really, really blessed, you should want to speak to God in the purest way possible. You know, anybody here ever prayed longer than 35 minutes in English without tongues strengthening you? Amen. Amen. Yes. See, not me. I can't pray that long. I I can do maybe five minutes before I have to get into the spirit. But there are people that can just pray with the understanding for very long times. I can't because my mind, I hear things, I can ask for certain things, but then the spirit because I'm connected, the spirit might want to take over, you know. And so it says, he that's for he that speaketh in an unknown, own, unknown tongue, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men, but unto God, for no man understands him. Howbeit in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. You ever hear people try to speak in tongues, but you know it don't sound right, nor does it feel right? Yeah. Anybody else? Just Donovan? Nobody else experienced that? Give me an emoji or something. Let me know you guys ain't dead out there. You all there? It's, you know, if you have the gift of tongues, then you'll know if somebody is really speaking in tongues. Because there's a there's a feeling. Yes, Brandon. How do you get uh, the gift of tongues? Say again? How do you get the gift of tongues? You see what it says? Ready? Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts. It's a gift that you can desire from God. Mm -hmm. See, but like I said earlier, you have to be aggressive. You can't, you can't just ask God for it. You have to desire this spiritual gift. Study what it does, who, you know, how does God use it? so that when it needs to manifest, it can come up. You know, we don't pray in tongues like we used to in our church, but that's how people get filled. When they see it, 
they're in that environment and they and they get it. But I received tongues when I started wanting it. I wanted to be able to speak to God unhindered. I was I was just jealous and I was I went to Love of Jesus 1986. And these people started praying in tongues and I got nervous. I didn't know what they were doing. Everybody around me. I was the biggest person. So I said, if they touch me, I could swing on them, you know. But then I heard a little voice said, they're speaking directly to God. And I got jealous. I said, I want to speak directly to God. And so that's that's how I began to search after God. I said, if these people are talking straight to God in a, in a God language, I want that. Can you imagine speaking directly to God for an extended period of time? That's why a lot of believers have peace. Because when you pray in the spirit, everything that needs to be said is said. And God hears it because it's the spirit. There is no no's. When you're praying in the spirit, you, you're not going to get a no. You're not going to get a maybe. Oh, see, because you're in the spirit. And the, and the Holy Ghost is the one prompting the prayer. So can you imagine a guaranteed answered prayer? So if you spend, like, say you spend 15 minutes praying in the spirit, you're going to be edified when you finish. Imagine increasing after 30 minutes. Then 45 minutes. See, you'll have more strength to pray in the spirit than you will in the natural. Because the natural is the flesh. And, you know, you, you that's a lot of work. So, so you have to, like we said earlier, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence or it allows violence. And the violence take it by force. You, God wants you to be aggressive with your spiritual gifts, knowing that they bless you and they bless others. You know, I, I love it when you guys are able to talk during Bible study and you share things that God revealed, because then I can be blessed. I can get edified. All right, so here we go. And you all saw that, right? Yes. Back to first, verse one. Follow after love and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God, for no man understandeth him, howbeit in his spirit he speaketh mystery. But he that prophesies speaketh unto men to edification, exhortation, and comfort. Many times people want to preach. They want to preach. It's in them. It's a gift from God. But they don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> you know, if you're going to prophesy, you have to have a, 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 a strong repertoire of the word of God, whereby you will, you will bring edification, exhortation, and comfort. So you see, he says this. Let's look at verse 3. Because... You want to say, I want to be a blessing. 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 So if you don't prophesy, meaning preach, this is not standing up, thus saith the Lord, chickens will start flying down Monticello Avenue at 3 a.m. And uh, they're only going to go into Baptist churches on Sunday to be eaten. <laughs> no, that's this is not prophesying like that. Prophecy is being able to uh, dispense by words the word of God. Earlier, we talked about you want to spend time in the Proverbs and in the Psalms a lot in order to get the word of God into you. See, Proverbs and Psalms, they bring hope comfort, edification. You get those things in you, you'll begin to be built up so that when you do have to preach and prophesy, you can be ready to give people the comfort, edification, and um, exhortation. So 
So let's look at these words. All right. The one, however, proper sign to men speaks for edification. So let's see what that word edification is. Edification, the act of building. Properly a building serving as a home, constructive criticism and instruction that builds a person up. To be the suitable dwelling place of God. Wow. Wow. I gotta start prophesying. Now I, you know, I do that. You see, and that's that's what you want. You want to know the word of God so much so that when you're speaking to people, the word of God, see, you're not just trying to encourage people and say, you know, have a nice day, God's gonna bless you. I, Hallelujah, Jesus loves you. Anybody can say that. A liar can say that. But when you begin to know God's word and you begin to use God's word, remember what I said, right? You know, you can also look in the epistles, right? When you begin to look at the Psalms, the Proverbs, the wisdoms, right? And you begin to use that to build people up then you prophesy. Somebody should have said amen. Man. I don't know. Amen. Amen. See, because many times people are, they're just prophet dooming. They just, they feel some kind of way and they go at it. You know, they just want to tell people all, you know, they just want to say how they feel or how they see things. Now, uh, the prophetic, the prophetic is how you see things. But prophesying, as in preaching, is how God sees things. You know, our nation is going to be selecting another president. And I, I was thinking about this today. How many more nations are more wicked than us? You know, and God sees so my concern is the kingdom. You know, I love this nation. I want this nation to prosper. I want I want to have a, a Christian life. I want everyone to be able to grow, do the right thing. But my main objective is the kingdom. Others might, you know, uh, be used by God to help this nation. Your people sent by God to help this nation, and, and I pray that they do their job. You know. So the first thing it does is to build you up. You know, like you ever seen uh, anybody ever heard of the word edifice? Where's Darlene at? She she she's from this almost the sea. Wait, was you born in the sixties or the seventies, Darlene? Sixty three. Oh, you're almost like grown. If somebody tells you. Who created this edifice? What would you say they were talking about? A building or part on the building. Exactly. You see, people, when you are using the word of God, you are building them up. You're making them an edifice. You're making them the building of God. All right? That's the first part. And the next one is... This says, all right, hold on. It's interesting. Consolation. What is consolation? Okay, so they, they did it. Let's let's do it the way the scriptures have it. Okay, so now the next thing is exhortation. Encouragement. Right? If if somebody wanted to encourage you, oh. <laughs> excuse me. Bless you. Oh, I guess nobody wants to bless me. I'm talking about being a blessing. Oh, bless you. Oh, now they're all coming out. Thank you. Thank you. I received it. Um, look at this. Exhortation. Encouragement. It's bringing somebody up. Bringing them somewhere up. So, um, 
But I also believe exhortation can actually mean to help somebody do something. So let's 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 look at let's let me take this word. Um, let's look at the word primarily a speaking closely to anyone. Consolation, comfort with a greater degree of tenderness. Right. So when you're using the, you know, when, when you're prophesying, we're just going by the word of God here. There should be a tenderness in your speech, not a harshness. Everybody read that. There's, it's, you know, it's comfort and consolation with a greater degree of tenderness. Paul said, I exhort you. You know, in other words, so um, there's a different word. Hold on a second. Y'all can, can see this? Yeah. Yes. Find the word exalt. Exalt. Hold someone in very high regard, right? Think or speak very highly. As Jason, uh, one of his songs, he, he sings, he says, exalt the Lord, you know, in his, you know. In other words, think highly of God. That's exalt, right? Now let's look at the definition, you know, of exhort. To, to exhort is to strongly encourage or urge to do something. So when you're exhorting someone, you're strongly urging them to do it. This will be for your benefit. See, when you're using the word of God, using them to talk, see, you, let's, let's don't get it twisted. We're talking about using the word of God to exhort. Not our feelings, not what we want. You know, oh, come on, come on, come to the store with me. Oh, come on, buy your shirt. Oh, man, you're going to want to go to the mall. Come on, you want to go to the movie. Oh, come on, it's John Wick. You're going to shoot everybody in the head. Come on, man. You don't want to miss that. We're going to be talking about gangbang. <laughs> so you see, you can exalt. You can strongly encourage in the flesh, right? But when you're prophesying with the word of God, that means you'll know what verses of scripture will exalt. Somebody say, ooh, no, but it didn't. You're making it up. You, you're making it seem like they're there. Nobody even there today. They're all on vacation. They're all on their yacht down in Venice, France. Is this too hard? I'm not getting any, any emoji. Not even emoji. Nobody's even going to give me an emoji. Am I on mute? No, what can hear you, Pastor. Yeah, we can hear you, Pastor. <laughs> Give me some emojis or something. <laughs> so when you know the word of God and you're able to re-articulate the word of God, not change it, but re-articulate it, speak it to someone, it should exhort them, strongly encourage them. Right? Amen. Listen, what was, the first, what was the first part we had? I don't remember. No, we're here. Edif edification? Yes. Edify. Build somebody up, right? First you build them up. Then you strongly encourage them. Now, you might strongly encourage them to do something. You know? Like, uh, like say, for example... The word of God gives us wisdom on a particular behavior, right? So you use the word of God to encourage people to partake of that behavior. Does that make any sense? Yes. You know, 
Yes, uh, love one another as I have loved you. See? That's exhortation. And then, as I have loved you, that's comforting. That's the next one. So you see, the word of God should be doing something to you while you're speaking it. While you're speaking, yes, Paul. Well, um, when you said that, you know, um, it, it you, you have to really reflect on who you are and, you know, your relationship with Christ <clears throat> as you as you read that commandment because he says as I have loved you mm -hmm. so that that really should or ought to make you reflect on your relationship with Christ and how you uh you know should be perceived by other people I mean that that doesn't matter but I think the spirit of God in you that that come that comes out because if you're not right with God, or if it, if it's not, then how can you love that person the way He loved them? You see, so that should make that should prompt you, that should compel you, you know, to really. And I I think a lot of people read and read that without really thinking about it. Most people don't, you know, because most most scriptures are not ingested. Sometimes people just read them and they just, you know, they don't hear it. That's what we, we were talking earlier. First, you are blessed. In other words, you have to be the first partaker of, of the gift. The word of God comes to you as a gift. It's for you. It should bless you. And then after it blesses you, you can now bring that word to somebody else to bless them. So like taking that verse into consideration. Love them as I have loved you. Now, how has God loved people? It's different for all of us. Even though we all know the term God loves us, not everybody has experienced his love the same way. Now, so you would ask, what do you mean by that? There are people that still sin and they say God loves them. If they knew the cost of him loving you, you wouldn't be so easy to sin. Right? If, if they really knew what it cost Jesus to love them, they would their, their lifestyle would be different. You know, I wrote earlier today, there's a phrase out there, and I see a lot of, um, I guess, you know, I don't want to call them evangelicals, but I, I, I call them American Christians. They say this. I heard this one guy praying, and he said this. Jesus, thank you know, to this effect, thank you for dying for us, so that we could, so that we would be forgiven. I'm like, what? no, he didn't die for you so that you would be forgiven. He died for you so that you could be forgiven. So when you think Jesus dying for you was for you to be forgiven, you'll think you're forgiven already. Anybody understand that? Yes. Amen. Amen. And so they ignorantly don't understand the power of words. And they give people a false sense of salvation, a false sense no. And so like, like that Jesus says, love them as I have loved you. But if you're not aware of how he loved you, then you can't, you will not love these people the way he's telling you to. Yet, in your mind, you'll feel justified by your bootleg love. Let me tell you what I mean by that. Say, for example, Jesus had just been Santa Claus to you, right? And you Santa Claus to somebody else. You'll feel as if you fulfilled that. See, but like Deacon Paul was trying to say, I don't think people recognize the true meaning of that. And most people don't, right? When you realize 
how much he bled and died and was beaten for you as an act of love, how much are you willing to be beaten for some somebody just to prove that you love them? Ooh, see, they can pull you, open up a can of worms. That's good. <laughs> See, everybody want to say they love you. Oh, oh, I love you, sister. I love you. Okay. You love me to the best of your ability, and that's true for all of us. But what if Jesus <laughs> was to tell us, love them as I have loved you? What if Jesus said that? With Darlene, that? don't let me get you in trouble. What would happen if Jesus said that? He said that. But what do you think is going to happen to us when he comes and talks to us about it? Well, initially when I heard what you got, what you were talking um, about concerning this, um, about the word affecting you, um, Jesus loved us while we was yet sinners. Yeah. So his love, his love can love through imperfection, yeah. um, through sin, through brokenness. You know, he he can love like that. So when you come upon somebody, that's why I always took it to me. When you come upon somebody, you are supposed to exude and extend that same type of love in someone else's brokenness. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Chicken wing, hold up, hold on. Get the grease. We're going to fry this chicken right here. So you're trying to tell me that because Jesus did it, that you could do it? No. He said, love <laughs> them as I have loved you. Example wise. Example wise. Yes. Example wise. See? No, you're not. Listen, don't don't back down. You are you are the wrong. Hold your guns, man. Don't don't put your guns in your holster. Shoot. That's the race. Shoot. Example We we are <clears throat> No, we can't, we can't. The whole point, Pastor Rich, is we can't do what Jesus did. That's why he had to do it. No, we can't. All right, see, I thought you had, I thought you had bullets. You done, uh -huh. you done shot me with blanks. You no, can't. it's like, you. okay, so his love, right? His love. His love. We can't love unless we have his spirit. You, and do you have Without it? his spirit, you can't Stay love. You can't do love you, like that. All right, Stay with me. Do you have it? Yes. Yes. Then, then don't make no excuses. Then don't don't take your guns back and change the bullets to to, to um pellets. Keep the bullets and shoot me. Don't what what you what you said was correct, but that also leaves it open ended as well. In the fact that you said Jesus didn't die for us to be forgiven, he died for so that we could be forgiven. Yes. Which leaves that open ended. So if we can be forgiven through the confession of him as Lord and Savior over our life, his love still has to be able to do that for us. Can it? Just by you said just by you saying it, he, he still has to love you enough. His love has to be enough for you to be forgiven. Did it? Yes. yes. <laughs> and that's it. So back to Deacon Paul, people do not understand the gravity of that. See, but you understand the gravity of it because you've been loved by him. You've been forgiven by him. You've been empowered by him. You've been trying to love people like he would. And you recognize, I don't, I don't have it, but I'm still going to try. See? That's using your bullets. Don't, don't, be, don't be backing up. Just keep shooting them. Well, you have the you have the love of God, and you know, and we will love people to that degree as we get less selfish, right? Yes. You see, it's all about selfishness. So, the love so yes. So when you said, "What would Jesus say if he came back and said, if he if Jesus said did what was your question did he love did you love like I loved is that what your 
Yeah, that's that's the gist of the question. What is he going to say when he when when we know he told us to? What 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 would he say to us? What would he say to us? He knows we he knows we <laughs> he knows that we we received his his love, right, and it's only right. for that that we could. Love. Right. I'm going to help you. Gonna, Can I answer that? Yes, please. Okay, <laughs> he would ask you. Taking the bullets out. He would. <laughs> He would ask us, and we can't say, oh, we couldn't because he had given unto us his love, so we are able to love, no matter what. No matter what, you know, he would, he, he would require it of us. That's, that's right. Why, that's why we need to know the word of God. Okay. You're we not got wrong. It to got it to give, so we got to give it. Right. So you're not wrong, Elder Darling, but there's a kindness in you that you know you might you might say something that will give somebody an excuse not to try because there's a kindness in you that exhorter is trying to come out that comforter is trying to come out but jesus was a straight shooter yes go ahead that was funny. okay in the scriptures it says um uh for a good man um some would lay down the, hmm? Some would dare. Some would dare to lay down their life. Yeah. But Jesus, while we was yet sinners, he did that. He did lay down his life for us. Yes. And so the reason that the reason he God recognized that state of ir if if he had not come, it the well, the Bible says it like this. Those that don't believe is condemned already. So the state of man's fallen state is already present. And so when you say you love somebody, Jesus died so we can be reconciled back. Yes. Yes. So now you, the born again believer, knowing knowing that he did that for you, just like Darcel said, you're supposed to love no matter what. But do we, whether you're saved or you're not saved, do you really do that? That's Does anybody that. really do that? That's what Paul said. I hope so. Because the I only one so. who really did that was Christ Jesus. Because well, he knew it, we couldn't do that. No, no. We couldn't. We Listen, we could not pay for the sins of the world. But we right. can love. You love your daughter. You'll sacrifice your life for your children. Yes. You, you have shown love. Now, we, you know, there are people that will die. For their loved one, they will show love. Yeah, so darling, you have shown love. You you can't you 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 um we're not talking about uh Jesus redeeming the whole world, but there are people that are willing to die. I mean, you know, when yeah. where's Paul? Paul, let me ask you a question and, and see if you can answer this. And maybe Brandon might be able to help. Paul, you there? Yeah, that's possible. When a, when somebody joins the a military, do they join the military knowing that they might die? Yes, of course. Right. In other words, they're willing to sacrifice their lives for others. Yeah. Yes, that's a, that's a part of the servitude of of going in there, knowing uh, you, you know you're going to die for your country. Yeah, there's yeah. a there's a, a great risk of uh, yeah of that happening. And so you see, there's that's a level of love. So you see, Darlene, people, people have been loving. You know, they have been loving, but nobody can love, you know, to redeem all of mankind. But you can have the love of God in you, where pre-adventure you may lay down your life for someone, and you know you might even lay down your life for sinners. Um, I'll give you an example. There are people in the church that get on your nerve and you still show them love. You still will do for them. You, you see, we get on God's nerve and he still does for us. So we, we have been loving with his love. But the question is, right? How much of his love are you aware of in your life? And that's where, 
you know, I think like Darlene is saying, she knows how much she sacrificed. So to her, it's like, I can't do that. I mean, it's impossible for me to do that. It's not impossible, but all things are possible. What? To him that believe in. Right. Through Christ. Christ and do him that believe. So you see, he would not tell you to love like he did if he didn't, if he's not giving you the ability to do it. Amen. Yes. You, you there, darling? Were you going to finish? Yes. I, you know, I, I get your point, but go ahead and finish it. Make it. No, I just was saying, because y'all went, went down that road, I, I was just saying, well, love me, love, love them, love them as I have loved you. I, I, I think it's sometimes, 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 and I don't want to get into feel, feelings and semantics and stuff like that, but it's like the only way that you could exemplify that type of love is by understanding that whoever you are called to love has the same state of uh, fault as you do, and whatever, and it might manifest in another way. It, you know, sin. You might manifest. I don't, in another I, don't, way. I, don't, I don't think that's a good way to look at it, though. Because because if you because if you could, that's about to, compassion. If you could words, empathy, empathy. I see. Okay, I get you now. In other words, empathize with that person and understand. Okay, empathy. I got you now. Yeah, like that's. I mean, I know that's not part of, but that's that's what I reading that love them, love them as I have loved you. Would All right. would have. But see, but but see, I think it's more of sympathy than empathy when it comes to God. Jesus wasn't like us he became like us he mm -hmm. knew he knew we didn't know our left hand from our right hand so when you get saved he gives you that sight you can see father forgive them for they know not what they do now yes. you can see yes. you know and you remember I mean, you know I'm, I'm agreeing with you you remember where you were and you see where yeah. they are and you can't help but have compassion and, and even take that compassion a little further and show love. But yes. the Bible says have compassion, what? One and towards then, another? One no, towards no, another. No, no, no. To no. them that are, no, no, to them that are. That's love, that's love. Have compassion, right? It's in, it's in Jude. Making a difference. Okay. See, you gotta if you're gonna have compassion, you have compassion that makes a difference. Makes a difference. Okay. Turn your compassion into love. You know, it's like you can see somebody hungry and be compassionate and just pray for them. That wasn't love. <laughs> Nobody needs your prayer when they're hungry. They need your chicken. So Jude, he says, have compassion, making a difference. So you can take your compassion to the next level, which is love. Jesus had compassion on the multitude. And what did he do? He healed them. No. He fed them. Oh, he fed them. He fed them. Yeah, sorry. He fed them. He fed them. You see, he said, I got to show these guys some love. You don't think they were like, yo, Jesus is the bomb. We sitting out here on Monticello. He went to churches, fried chicken, and hooked us up. So we have knowing that the word of God says for us to love as he has love, right? I'm just going to go back to our Bible study. We know that now as the word of God. But if we hadn't personally experienced it, then we can't really live it. And that's why um, I don't criticize people like I used to when I first got saved. I was very, 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 very staunch with the word of God. So I criticized everybody. But now as I got older, I realized people just don't know God. <clears throat> They're saved, but they don't know God. They don't know what he requires of them. The Bible says this, when Jesus could do no miracles, he began to teach the people. 
So if, if if I know that you're supposed to love people like Jesus did, but you don't know that, what should I do? I want you to answer this. Wendy, what's your answer if you're there? Wendy, what's your answer if you're there? All right. Don't ask me the question again. What's your answer? Hello? Yeah, what's your answer? Yeah. You said, what's my answer? Yeah. <laughs> So what's the question? All right. So you see, guys, anybody have an answer to that? You teach him. Say it one more time. You teach them. Exactly. The Bible says when Jesus could not do any miracles there, he taught the people. So when people don't know how to obey God, you have to teach them. You teach them the word of God so that the word of God gets in them and now they have faith to respond to the preaching. You know, when uh, anything, love, giving, um, praying, reading, Every aspect, excuse me, every aspect of our Christian walk, there's a verse in the Bible to teach us to do it. And when you read it, it should begin to talk to you. So that when a preacher now tells you what to do, it's not, it's not feelings. It's not like, oh, I feel like I should listen to this preacher. No, it's confirming the word that you have already sown. It makes sense. Amen. You know, like yeah. Jesus, right? Jesus said, give, right? And it shall be given back to you. Paul says, right? Let everyone purpose in their own heart to give. See, when you start seeing, okay, giving is normal. <laughs> Church should not have to be a dentist where the preacher is trying to pull money out of your pocket. You know, in other words, you should know enough of the word of God to go to church to give. You know, if you, well, I don't know, you, you, guys, you got a lot of Jewish people in Jersey City now, right? I don't know if they're bold like they are out here. Yes. But you ever see them on, on Saturday with a pouch walking? That's their tithe. They walk to the synagogue with their tithe in their hands to give in the synagogue out here well i don't have them here in central jersey but like um summit westfield you can see them they have their uh, what's it called darling what's that hat amicus what's it called donovan you know you got one what's it called what's that hat you have the yarmulks the yarmulks the yarmulke i don't have a yarmulke i had a tali yarmulke Paul got Paul called it a yamak. Paul, what is it? You got one, Paul? I <laughs> know. The the yamaks. The yamaks. Um uh, but they look it up. Right. But you know, we was it's we like used, Yeah, we used to call it ham hammock yamakas or whatever. But they would have a bag. Yeah. They would have a bag and they would walk to temple. The keeper is the keeper known as the yamok. Or yarmulke, bull cap, or couple. Right, but see, but they have been trained as the people of God to give. They always give. That's one thing. If you, they're going to give to God. You know. So when you understand the Word of God in different aspects, love, prayer, reading, abstaining from sin. When you start reading those things, they become a part of your daily Christian life. And so when a preacher is telling you to do something, it's like, what's 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 that? Uh, Donovan, are you old enough to have watched Charlie Brown? You ever heard of Charlie Brown? Yeah, Charlie Brown Snoop, with Snoopy the dog. 
Okay, never mind. You remember the teacher, Miss Crabtree? Well, no, Miss Crabtree was um that's a little rascal. You and Charlie Brown when he didn't get the answer, what what did the teachers say? So when you don't know the word of God and the preacher's telling you something, it's like wah, 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 wah. You can't you can't even believe that they're telling you to do this. You actually think they're telling you to do this, but it's actually the word of God coming to what? Edify, exhort, or comfort you. And that's why you want the word of God. You want to be able to preach. You want to prophesy. So the last one, so we see edification. So the last one is comfort, right? Here, they use the word encouragement. Encouragement, gladness, joy, consolation, comfort. Let's see what it means. Someone close beside, personal exhortation that delivers the evidence that stands up in God's court. Wow. When God gives you comfort, it lifts you up. You're able to, to embrace the peace that came with the comfort. I am... Um, anybody... You, you, all right. Forgive me for this bad testimony. All right. I grew up poor. Right? I grew up in the projects. Then I went down from the projects to the tenement, which is the lowest level of living in Harlem, right? And I lived in an abandoned tenement building. You know, my dogs was my blanket. They kept me warm. You know, we didn't have any heat. We used to have to boil water, you know, for heat. And we had blankets that were like impenetrable you know it's like if the army had blankets that's the kind of blankets we had they were so rough you know and you know um sheets or whatever never had comfort while sleeping everything was from a poor position i get married i saw Lena, she has sheets she has a cover, she has a duval, and then she has a comforter. I'm like, whoa, four layers of comfort. And I remember, just, just stay with me for a second. I remember my first time laying under a comforter. And it was, you know, I'm saved though, right? And the comfort, it was down, it was feathers, but it was so comforting. You know, you it can, you hug it and it hugs you back. Anybody got a real comfort in the house? Or you just got blankets like I had when I was two? Yes, I have goose down comforts. That's, that's I what I have an old comfort, yeah. You, yeah, that's that's what she had. Wendy, you got any real comforters or you, you got blankets? Yes, yes, I do. I got real ones. They they. They work. <laughs> what, 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 what works? Comforters. So you see, I didn't recognize comfort until I had a comforter. And what I did was with that thing is I grabbed it and I, and I put it around me just to feel it comfort me. You see, I didn't realize that it was a comfort term. And the Bible says the Holy Ghost is the comforter. He envelops us, and we should envelop him. We should spend so much time with him that we can feel his comfort. So when you are using the word of God to prophesy, it should bring comfort to people. They should feel like, oh, God's got me. Oh, my goodness. God is good. Thank you, Lord. 
Anybody here? Man, y'all used to give me. I got, I got a hate for no. you. See now, if you if you if you're not gonna bring these three things, you are not prophesying properly. You could be using a prophetic voice, which is nothing wrong with it. But when you're going to use the word of God, it should be edifying, exhorting, and comforting. So let's go back to the lesson so we can see what we're, what we're talking about. Right? So now we can understand why Paul said that that person is better in the church than somebody that's just praying in tongues. But he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understands him, albeit in his spirit he speaks mystery. But he that prophesies speaketh unto men to edification, right? Exhortation and comfort. So if you're going to open up your mouth and use the word of God, you should have it. Now, let's, now we're going back to what... Uh, Deacon Paul and Elder Darling talked about. We're going back there because it's very vital that we get this. It should first be in you. You have to be the first partaker of the word of God. Because only then will you know if you're bringing out the word of God to edify, to exhort, or to comfort. If you don't know it yourself, if it has not comforted you, if it has not exhorted you, if it had not edified you, and you don't know how to use it. Amen. I sat under the word of God way long before I preached the word of God. And when I preached the word of God, there were times when I comforted people. Then there was times when I exhorted people. And then there was time when I edified people. But then I got around certain people that got on my nerve, and then I prophesied with you them, know, and I just corrected them. Because I was in a position to correct. You know, I wasn't trying to correct them. Let's keep going, because we're almost done. You're right. He that's verse five, verse four. Darling, can you keep reading four and five and six? That verse four through six? Yes. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, but he that prophesieth edifieth the church. For I would that you all spake with tongues, but rather that ye prophesieth. For greater is he that prophesieth than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret, that the church may be that the church may be seen edifying. Oh, so. Now, brethren, if I come unto you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you except I shall speak to your to you either by revelation or by knowledge or by prophesy, prophesying or by doctrine? There we go. We're not going to deal with that, but those four areas is where you can come at different angles. You know, you can get a revelation from God. And you can share it. You can get some knowledge. And you can share it. You can get a vision of the future. And you can prophesy. It. Or you can share church doctrine. So you see, this is decent and in order. This is how things can be done decently in order. But when you talk about events... And how you see them, it's not going to be a lot of faith. And I think a lot of times, you know, not to knock people down, but not many people are using the word of God to speak. 
you know, I think a lot of people are using what they think, how they see it to speak. But if you had an ample supply of the word of God, yes, speaking of all. I'm sorry, Pastor. You can finish your thought. And then no, I'll no, I'm gonna, I, want, I, want, I want to change my thought, but that was good. Go ahead. Oh, well, um, it's, it's, um, um, I, you know, I, I got this job, and um, the one I interviewed this for this job a, a few weeks ago, and I, and I finally got him in training. Um, and um, the person who went and interviewed me, um, he went up training me. So we, um, I don't know, we were talking about a lot of different things, but when we had him back to the office, uh, we started speaking, you know, with, uh, you know. I don't know how the conversation um it all organically, you know, came to, to God. Come find out he was a he was a Christian, but there were some certain um things that he uh didn't believe in. And one of the things uh, ironic well, let's just say ironically, but uh happenstantially, uh, it was about tongues. And so I wanna I wanna I wanna take this opportunity now to really get a good understanding of grasp because we you know he he didn't understand the gift and he he uh, it was almost calvinistic because he said that the gift ceased i didn't want to get into you know debate or anything i'm like well you know i don't i don't see that such i just said what i knew and what the spirit you know um uh revealed in me to to say which was uh, you know, because he 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 did say he did mention about inter you know we need an interpreter, you know I the, he didn't believe that uh it, it was just it's just things that you say but how do you know that you're saying and uh, uh you know I mentioned the Apostle Paul and how he you know he he himself said that I, that he wishes that all would speak in tongues more than he he did. And that yes, you do need an interpreter. Um, we didn't really go in depth into it because we got we got another uh, somebody else that came by, so he kind of interrupted the conversation. Um, but how, how you know? I guess my question is: Yes, we do need, um, and we see in scripture here that we speak. It says that uh, he that speaks and I know it's not edifies himself but he that prophesies edifies the church so the question is how you know we need an interpreter in some instances we need an interpreter and we need we need because we have the gift of of tongues and we have the gift of interpretation um and then and when when in pentecost when 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 the fires came, everybody spoke in a different language so when we speak in tongues, our church, and you know, when the Holy Spirit comes upon us and we speak in tongues, you know, a lot of people think it's, it's just gibberish. It's just, not, but we know it as you know, a uh, you know, building our Most High faith, you know, as we speak it, and only God in between. The, so that's where we kind of got, you know, uh. It took a uh, took a turn, you know. Yeah. So I want to really get an understanding of this. So yeah, this is you know, and Brandon, you there, Brandon? Brandon, you still there? Brandon, no, he left. He went to get some some tea. I don't know. I don't know. He's sleeping or what? <laughs> yeah, right. <run, run. laughs> He'll be back. So no, listen. I'm here. Sorry. All right. All right. So what happens is this, right? People take everything from this chapter out of sync and they place it where they want to argue, right? So if we go, if we go verse by verse, I'm gonna do this because I've done this plenty of time. I'm gonna do this verse by verse, and we're gonna see some, right? So let's just do it verse by verse and, and watch it. 
We know Paul's talking about a verse one, desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you preach. Prophesy means preach, right? He that speaks in an unknown tongue is speaking unto God, right? But he that preaches speaks to men, edify, exhort, and comfort. Here we go. Ready, Paul? He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edify himself, but he that preaches edifies the church. So here's here is a, a good answer. But so you got to take a person verse by verse. It says, I would that you all spake with tongues. In other words, if you got the gift, come on, use it. But rather that you prophesy. So you got to ask, ask that person the next time, how many people in your church preach? Mm -hmm. Right? Paul said, I would mm -hmm. that you all spake with tongues. But rather that you all prophesy. For greater is he that prophesied than he that speak with tongues, except the one that speaking with tongues interprets that the church may receive edifying. Now, if the person that speaks in tongues knows how to interpret, it's greater than preaching. Because now that person got a word from God by the Spirit of God, and he's going to now speak it the interpretation in English. Right? Yes. That's what Paul said. The person that speaks, right? If they had interp if they had an interpreter, that would be better than just preaching. But he also said, I want everybody to preach. So he asked the person, you know, do you preach? Next time somebody asks you that they don't believe in tongues, you ask them, do you believe in preaching? Mm -hmm. And then you ask them, they said, why don't you preach? Mm. And you say, the mm. reason why you don't preach is the reason why you don't have tongues. Mm. Preaching, mm. preaching is a gift. Why, why don't you preach? Or, or, it's mm -hmm. just, or, or it's just your minister is the one supposed to be preaching. That's it. Amen. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Throw, throw them under a bus. And said, why? You know, Paul said, I wish that you all would prophesy, all preach. I mean, later yeah. on, we're going to get down to it, down in the bottom. He said that everything be done decently in order. Mm -hmm. Now, if everybody starts prophesying, nobody's going to get edified. I mean, excuse me, if everybody starts speaking out in tongues and there's no interpreter, nobody's going to be edified. But he didn't say sure. don't do it. He said do it in order. Yes. You know, and if they don't, and I think he said if there's no interpreter, then, then, you know, don't, don't do it if there's no interpreter. But that's in a church setting. Now, if everybody is praying, now, if everybody's praying, now, nobody is speaking in tongues, but they're praying in tongues, there's no need for interpretation. Now, Wendy, yeah. Wendy, Wendy Williams, I mean, excuse me, God forgive me, you're not Wendy Williams, what's your name? Wendy Clark, are you there? Are you in the Uber somewhere? Wendy. I just wish people came to Bible study and they were there. All right, now watch this. Donovan, Brand Donovan, you ready? Donovan left too. You went to the start? Uh, I'm here, amen. All right. Now watch this. I want you to repeat after me. Chickens don't fly. Chickens don't fly. <laughs> now, Chickens Darlene, don't fly. Darlene, say it, say it. Darlene, say chickens don't fly. Darshell, somebody say chickens don't fly. Chicken don't fly. Chickens, chickens don't, don't fly. fly. Chickens, chickens don't, fly. don't fly. All right. So if somebody heard all of us saying chickens don't fly, guess what? Everybody be like, praise God, chickens don't fly. <laughs> Right? Because we spoke with the understanding. All of us spoke with the understanding. We all preached that chickens don't fly. We all did it, right? Yeah. Now, if I was to blot out in tongues, and then Wendy would blot out in tongues, and Paul would blot out in tongues, everybody would be like, oh, what, what, why did they do that? Because if you say, they spoke in tongues, and it's like, okay, so what was said? 
So if, if I start speaking in tongues, then you start speaking in tongues, and another person starts speaking in tongues, it can it can look like they don't know what they're doing. But if I start praying in tongues, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to God. Now watch this. Wendy, you, 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 you there for real? Yes. All right. Now I'm going to pray and I'm going to pray and I want you to repeat my prayer. Ready? <laughs> Father, I need a new mouse to play with my cat. Father, I need a new mouse to play with my cat. Darlene, say it. Or anybody else say it. Father, I need a new house to play with the cat. No, a new mouse. Father, I need a new mouse to play with my cat. I need, I need a new mouse to play with my cat. Now, do we pray Father, like I need that? a new mouse to play with my cat. Now, do we pray like that? No. No. Mm. Jesus said, don't use vain repetitions like the heathen do. No. So if I'm praying to God in the spirit, you're not going to be saying what I'm saying. You're going to be saying something totally different. You see? And even if I'm speaking to God and you start speaking to God, we're not saying the same thing. Neither do we need to because everybody around us are spiritual. It's only when you're around unsafe people that they get uncomfortable. So let me ask you a question. Should you care? No. No, no, no. You got to be careful now. You know, if they're unsaved and you want to get them saved, then yes, you should care. Uh, yes, yes. Amen. But if they don't look like they want to get saved, then there's more of us. And let's all pray in tongues. Let's confuse the devil. Let's scare him to death. Amen. So you see, let's let's go back to the text. I would that you all speak with tongues, but that you all prophesy. Right? Everybody preaching. Everybody preaching in the church. He that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret that the church may receive edify. Verse 6. Now, brethren, if I come unto you speaking with tongues. Paul, you, you, you see what he says? If I come to you yes. speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you? Why yes. am I speaking? Right? I'm there's no profit to you if I'm speaking to you in tongues. God understands me, but you don't understand me. Right? What shall I profit you except I should speak to you by revelation, by knowledge or prophecy yeah. or doctrine? Yes, amen. Prophets do nothing if you can't understand it. Amen. Right. I'm fine, but it's going to do you no good. But no way, you know, we're going to see where he talks about not doing something. But he's not talking about don't, you know, don't ever speak in tongues. He begins to talk about how to do it and that you should do it and that it's something that you could do. He's talking about speaking, right? But we know, verse 7, right? And, and even things without life given sound, whether a pipe or a harp, except they give a distinction in the sounds, how shall it be known what is piped or harp? Well, if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself for the battle? Ready? So likewise ye, except you utter by the tongue words easy to be understood, how shall it be known what is spoken? For well, you should be speaking into the air. Now, it was Donovan at? If Donovan loves Jesus, right? Don, what's, what's her name? Darling loves Jesus, right? If Darlene comes into my face speaking speaking in tongues, what do you think I'm going to do? Tell me, just Darl Wendy, you go first. What do you think I'm going to do if Darlene speaks in tongues in my face? What do you think I'm going to do, Wendy? Gonna oh, I, thought I, I thought I was talking. I thought you heard me. Now you're just gonna ask her, what are you doing? Why are you talking? I can't understand you. Why are you talking to me like that? Right. Now, now darling, would I do that to you? Darling, would I do that to you? No. <laughs> exactly. I think you were speaking too. I would start speaking too. See, see, Wendy, yeah. that, that's, the, that's the problem. 
when people don't know how to respond in the spirit, they respond like Wendy said. They read this like Wendy read it. No. If Donovan came, if Donovan, if Donovan came up to me and spoke in tongues, I would start doing a little Pentecostal shimmy. I'm like, oh, Donovan feeling something. Let's go with this. I'm gonna be like, oh yeah, he's talking God's language. So I'm gonna be, I'm gonna get my groove on. I'm gonna be like, yeah, let's do this. <laughs> Amen. You know what I'm saying? Because I got it. I don't need to understand what he said. I don't need to. But I know if he is speaking, and I'm a speaker. I'm going to speak in tongues too. And we couldn't care less that we don't understand. <laughs> Nobody hear me. Come on. Amen. See, Amen. We're, we're, we're having a Holy Ghost party at that moment. They could have both shook out of our Lord. Cody, we start gassing each other up. Yeah. Before, you, mm -hmm. before you know it, we might even start praying in tongues. See, but when you don't have the spirit, of course you're gonna, you you know, Paul's trying to show how to use it to edify. But when everybody in that room, everybody has that gift, everybody would be comfortable. And we're gonna see later on when there's people that don't have it, they're uncomfortable. Yes, Paul. So praying and speaking, Pastor, okay. Like okay, when we're in church and we we're we're you know we get the Holy Spirit upon us and we start speaking in tongues. That's speaking in tongues. But are we speaking in tongues? Because I I pray as well. So is right. there a difference? I, yeah, it is. We saw it earlier. We're gonna look at it again. You ready? I'm gonna use Paul Alvarez as an example. You ready? During the time of prayer, during praise and worship, when Mikey and them is up there. Paul Alvarez and Donovan, their head is, is bowed and they're praying in tongues. They're not speaking. They're praying. They, their heads are bowed and they're praying. You ever notice that? When you're praying in tongues, your head is bowed, your eyes is closed. You're not talking to anybody. You're praying. Amen. Okay. Donovan, am yeah. I right or wrong? You went to sleep too? Now, if you're looking around, I thought, oh, oh, I thought, I, now that's speaking. You're probably trying to look for attention. But when somebody is, you know, right, darling, am I here? Yeah, right? Your head is down, your eyes are closed, you're praying. Yes. But when your eyes are up and you're looking around, you could be speaking because you're a little more conscious you're a little more aware of what's going on but when your head is bowed and your eyes closed you're in a posture of prayer so we're going to see this by by scripture paul not just by that example let's watch it by scripture right amen right. verse um verse 12 even so ye for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts seek that you may excel to the edifying of the church wherefore let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. So if, you know, Wendy, Wendy, can I bother you for a minute? Well, I'm going to bother her anyhow. Wendy, I need to bother you. Wendy! I'm right here. It's just that I can't take you to mute. It's slow. I can hear you. All right. Now, Wendy looks around a lot. Right? So it's hard to tell if she's <laughs> praying or speaking. She's always looking like, oh, what's going on? And then, you know, some, some tongues will come out. So we don't never know if she's praying or if she's speaking, you know. But she looks more like she's speaking, right? And if somebody was to see her looking around and have those words come out of their mouth, they would look at her like, what is she saying? You know, because it looks like she's talking. So when people are talking, Somebody want to know what you're talking about. But when your head is bowed and your eyes are closed and you're praying, nobody wants to know what you're talking about. Nobody asks you what you're praying. Nobody there? I'll show you here, right? Amen. I hear you, Pastor. Amen. Yes, Pastor. Amen. Amen. 
when your head is bowed and you got tongues coming out, nobody wants to know what you're saying because they know you're praying. They know this is personal. You're in the spirit and you're praying. But when you're up and you're just walking around and tongues is coming out, people want to know, okay, is God speaking? Is God saying something to you? Come on, give me interpretation. You know, and that's what he was saying. You know, don't do that. Don't make people think that you have something to say from God. You know, people, not just us. Now, if I see you speaking in tongues, I'm fine. I'd rather you speak in tongues and speak the stuff you do be talking about. <laughs> All right, we're going to keep going. Here we go, Paul. Watch this. Ready? Amen. Wherefore, let him that speaks in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. See, speaking, your eyes are open and you're blotting out something. And somebody sees it and they can hear it. You're blotting out words unintelligible words you're blotting them out now watch this you're still talking to god and god is talking to you god could be telling you you know there's a a bomb in uh port authority you know god can be downloading information to you that's why you want to be in the spirit so in case he does give you the interpretation in your mind no. You, might not, you might not articulate it, but you might know what you were talking about. All right. Amen. Verse. Uh, let's go back to verse 10. There are, it may be so many kinds of voices in the world. None of them is without signification. Therefore, if I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall be unto them that speaketh a barbarian. And he that speaketh to speak it shall be a barbarian unto me. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't have that language. So you see, it, it, it can throw a person without it off. That's what right. you have to understand. People without it cannot comprehend it, so it throws them off. Point blank. Right? Yep. Now, now let's go down. Here we go. Ready? Verse 14. Somebody say verse 14. Verse 14. Verse 14. Now, is that you, Brandon? No, that's Donovan. Brandon really fell asleep. No, I'm here. Oh, Brandon, read the first six words. The first for eight. If I pray. Is in oh. blue. If, for so if I pray. Right. For if I pray in an unknown, an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth. See? See, Paul? Yeah, yep. You I remember speak. going 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 over this too, Pastor. Right. Yep. We can speak in tongues, which means we're up, we're blotting out stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, with eyes are fully open, we're fully aware that we're speaking. But yes. if I'm praying in an unknown tongue, my spirit is praying. My brain, my understanding is unfruitful. Yes. But, you yes. know, praying. And, and, I'm praying now. I'm not speaking. I'm not being disruptive. I'm not making noise. I'm not trying to edify nobody. I'm not trying to draw attention to anyone. You know, <laughs> no, I'm not doing any of that. No, no. Right. Yes. Yes. Speaking to Donovan. Yeah. So, um, you know how it says sing, uh, sing with psalms and new spiritual songs? When we sing in tongues and we're, our eyes are open, and we're up. That's like speaking in God in tongues, right? That's not praying. That's speaking to Him. Well, I I can't sing in tongues, so I never did it. But I know what the Bible says coming up here, right? It's coming up. We'll okay. No. Right. We'll look at it. It's, we're going to get to it. You know, like Pastor Jason always try to tell people sing in the spirit, and then some of them do it. I I just shut down because I I can't even sing in the natural. I, Trying to sing in the spirit. <laughs> I mean, you know, mm -hmm. faith come by here, man. I know I can. I, maybe, you know, maybe I can get it, you know. All right, ready? For, with for left for him, what, what verse am I at? 15? 14. 14. 14. For if I pray, see, I'm praying now. In an unknown tongue, my spirit prays. But my understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? This is what Paul says. I will pray 
with the Spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. Now, you know, oh, oh, Wendy's battery wants to die. Now, Darlene, I'm going to pick on you. Darlene don't jump up in the middle of the church. Everybody will look at her like, okay, spirit is on her. Let's go with the interpretation. And if she don't have the interpretation, we're going to rush over to her, touch her forehead, and see if she all right. Mm. There was a church in Manuet, New York, called Redeeming Love Christian Center, with Pastor Utterback, Utterback. And before he would preach, they would have a time when people, if they had a word, they would speak in tongues, speak in tongues. Watch this, Paul. Eyes open. They would go, everybody would go down to the, to the platform, speak in tongues. And then somebody would be there to interpret. And they did it in order. They had a certain time when people did it. All right, so watch this. Verse 15, what is it then? I will pray with the spirit and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the spirit and I will sing with the understanding also. So if you can make melody while you're singing in tongues or in the spirit, then you got it. I did it a few seconds ago. I didn't realize I was able to. But I guess I get embarrassed in front of people. Okay, I can do it. Just don't be around me. Anybody seen that? Heard that? Anybody hear what we're talking about? Amen. Now, here we go. Amen. So you see, Paul, you, you, you throw it at those people when they talk about you shouldn't do that. Then ask them how many people in your church prophesy. Now, we're not talking about prophetic utterances. How many people in your church preach? Mm -hmm. Paul said you all should be preaching. You all should mm -hmm. be edifying the, the church. If you have yeah. the if you have the gift, if you have if you're a Christian, you should be preaching. Amen. Every, every one of us here can preach, some better than others. You know, early on, early on, I used to make sure everybody was behind the microphone. Remember that, Darshan? Everybody. I made sure everybody was behind a microphone so they can get used to the gift of preaching. Because it's amen. important. So it doesn't become a God. Preaching, amen, should amen. Not, preaching should not be a God to you. It should just be a gift. But what happens is because one person usually does all the preaching, it seems like it's a God. Oh, don't don't preach. How else are people going to hear? All right, come on, Rich. You got to get going, man, because it's time. Verse 16. Darling, can you read down to 19? 16 to 19? 15 to 19? Yes. Yes, praise God. What is it then? I will pray with the spirit and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the spirit and I will sing with the understanding also. Else when thou shall thou shall bless with the spirit, how shall he that occupieth the room oh, how shall he that occupied the room of the unlearned say amen at the giving of thanks seeing that he understandeth not what thou sayest for thou verily for thou verily give thanks well but the other is not edified I thank my God I speak with tongues more than ye all. Yet in the church I had rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice I might teach others also. 
than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. Amen. So nowhere is Paul telling you not to do it. Later on, we're just going to tell you how to do it decent, right? He says this, verse 16. And this is good. You know, like uh, Brandon. Brandon and Donovan. Do you guys have Thanksgiving dinner? Your family? My dad's house. Yeah. Where at? Where, where at? My dad's house. Do they bless do they bless the meal before they cut the turkey? Well, they ask meat, meat or Brandon to pray for the food before they cut the turkey and uh, they distribute the food. So what do you do? What do you do? What do you do? Oh, I bless the food. And then we... Wait, now, when you bless the food, how do you bless the food? I said, Father, we thank you for this food. We thank you for this Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, sanctify and make it use for our bodies. We plead the blood of Jesus over it. We give you praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> we plead the blood of Jesus over that turkey. Yeah. That turkey saved. <laughs> now, you see... And everybody heard you. And what do they say? Amen. They say amen because they understood. Now imagine if they say, Deacon Donovan, can you come bless Thanksgiving dinner? And you do it in the spirit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, look at this, Donovan, 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 Donovan. You know, all right. Uh, <laughs> reverse 17. For thou verily givest thanks well, but the other is not edified. <laughs> so can you imagine? It's Thanksgiving, Paul, you know, me, Paul, the church come to your dad's house with you, Brandon, for Thanksgiving. And they ask you to bless the meal and you start blessing the meal in tongues. And you finish, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. You start feeling the Holy Ghost, right? You know, <laughs> you know it was the it was the perfect blessing. That's right. what I'm trying to say. Paul said, "Look," he said, "Else when thou has blessed with the Spirit, how can they say Amen <laughs> at the giving of thanks? For you did give thanks in a very great way. Right. You spoke directly to God. You 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 were like praise God and." Tongues, you thank God he did it for like three hours, man. The food got cold and everything. But thou verily give it. This what I'm just the point I want to make. You can even bless people in tongues, but they don't even know how to say thank you. You know, it doesn't it doesn't register. But you did a wonderful blessing, but they didn't they didn't feel the edification. I was um I didn't have the power of God, I guess. And I, I, I guess it's my first time admitting it. I was in Paris, France with Pastor Jason on a missions trip. And I was praying for someone and they didn't they didn't feel it. <laughs> Ready? And I told God, move on, next person, please. Because my prayer was not, my power was not in the laying on of my hands. My power was in my words. So they didn't understand a word I was saying. I'm praying for them in English and they speak French. They didn't even know I was done. Come on, it's a true story, y'all. Nobody, no emojis, nobody got it. Come on, man. <laughs> It's the same. It's the same concept, Pastor. It's the same concept. same concept. And and they didn't know that I I prayed the best prayer ever, and they felt nothing. They felt nothing. <laughs> they felt nothing. And I felt like it's on them, man. They didn't know what I said, and I just told them, move along, next person, please, next person. Please. And you know, but had I had power in my hands, you follow what I'm saying? When I'm praying, they would feel it, whether they understood the words or not. So it's the same concept. You know, should I have spoken in French? Yeah. Maybe I should have spoken tongues. 
because maybe they could have related better in tongues than they could in English. Anybody hear me? Yes. Pastor Rich, yes. I, 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 you remember years ago you sent me to um, Dr. Stella's church out yes. there in Edison, yes. and I would go out there every Sunday, and um, they would speak in this language called Tamil. It's like an Indian. Tamil. Indian Paca I don't know if it was a Pakistani or Indian language, Tamil. Oh, it's, it's Tamil. It's Indian. <laughs> Tamil, okay. <laughs> I gotta say Tamil. T uh, okay, and so they would be praying in that language and showing stuff on the screen with that really curly writing, and curly I writing. didn't understand nothing that was going on, except when the orphan basket came around. They had a cute little orphan basket, but I just sat and prayed in tongues with them, yes. and I felt like God was setting us on one accord. I don't know what what they were saying. Yeah, there you go. They say, yeah. they say stro strotum, strotum. Strotum, strotum, and I think that meant praise God, praise God. That's all I got. It was, it was different, but I liked it. You felt it. You didn't like it. You felt it. You felt yeah, it. like I was on one accord. I felt like exactly. God is everywhere. Like He can touch everybody. Like, you can yeah. pray in tongues in a Catholic church, and you'll feel the presence of God. It's, it's what's in us, you know. All right, here we go. Ready? Because we got to finish this up. Paul said. I pray in tongues more than you all. Yet in the church, I had rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice I might teach others also than 10,000 words in another tongue. So like I said earlier, when the Bible study first started, most people do not pray in tongues at home. A lot of people just pray in tongues or speak in tongues when they're out in public. Not everybody uses this gift at its full potential. Praying in tongues at home when nobody's around, that's, that's when you know that you're building yourself up. When we come together and you're praying in tongues, sometimes it's because the Holy Ghost is bringing unity. But if you have that gift and you start developing it at home, it would be, it would be a pure flow. It would be a pure flow, meaning that you'll know the difference between speaking in tongues and praying in tongues. Because if you're praying in tongues, there'll be a time when you'll start feeling like you want to get louder and prophesy in tongues. Amen. You might just be like, oh, you see, it just take you to a whole nother level. Then you know that you're actually prophesying in tongues. But you have to develop the prayer language, you know, over time. Here we go. Ready? And this is a little difficult. Um, verse 22. Wherefore, tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. But prophesying serve is not for them that believe not, but for them that believe. Now, see, Paul, the next time you get, get a person, throw this hard verse at them. Yeah. This, this is hard. Mm -hmm. So tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. In other words, me speaking in tongues is a sign that God is in my life. Yes, amen. But you, mm -hmm. but you, jokers, you jokers don't want nobody to know that God's in my life, so you want to stop me from speaking in tongues. Come on, you want this stop is me. great. You see, he yes. Paul said, said mm -hmm. speaking in tongues is a sign for, for unbelievers. Of course, the devil's going to get an unbeliever and say, You shouldn't do that. That's the unedified. And it'll be like, Yo, chicken wings, watch. Once I finish speaking in tongues, guess what I'm going to say to you? This is key because we're going to see this. This is key, right. So, tongues is, you know, prophesying, preaching, serve not for them that believe not. So when you're preaching to unbelievers, they don't, have, they don't, know, they don't know what words you're talking about. You know, they have no clue. But yeah, you know what I, I noticed? Forgive me for this race, race shoe, uh example. I can watch a Caucasian word of faith preacher, right? All the words be, will be very 
eloquently articulate and I can understand. Then I can listen to a uh, white, Puerto Rican, Indian, Black, Pentecostal that will say like, oh, not a, oh, a few little words. And I would understand exactly what they're talking about. <laughs> Nobody heard me. Is it just me? Amen. 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 I hate um, you. Amen. See, some people have to use a lot of words for people to understand them. But when a when a Holy Ghost filled person is preaching, that's why there's some preachers they can say a few words and you just fall out, believe in God, crying and everything. It's not coming out everywhere. And another message, you gotta listen to the whole sermon and say. That was a good sermon. But when you hear certain preachers, they get out there and they just preach a few minutes and them bars just hit you right in your spirit and you just like, you just lose it. Mm. That's what, exactly. you know, yes. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, finish ahead. Up. no I'm, I'm reading the scripture, going over the scripture uh, 22 that you just said and just brought to mind that, that, that scenario where I was I was you know speaking with him and the other guy came in. Now that 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 one, the one that I was speaking with initially, had been witnessing to this other guy came that came in, and he left and he came back. So you guys are still talking. Like, yeah, it's, oh man, and you know he kind of made a joke of it, but then we started witnessing to him, right? And because and um, it was uh, it was one of those. But this pa this passage, this is uh, well for songs not for a sign, not for them that believe, but for them that believe not. But prophesying serves not to them that believe not, but for them which believe. So is this, in essence, saying okay? Like, can I take in that scenario, saying okay, we pro we we were prophesying to this person because we were speaking truth right. and. That's Right. Let's let's you know what Paul, your question will be answered in the next couple of verses. Okay. Yeah. So let's let's let the scriptures give you the answer because watch how easy it is. Right? Amen. Because he's, yep. he's gonna put he's gonna put you in a scenario. <clears throat> okay. Right? Verse 23. This is all part of verse 22. If therefore the whole church be come together into one place and all speak with tongues, and there come in those that are unlearned. For unbelievers, will they not say that you are mad? Right? In other words, everybody's speaking in tongues, right? We're fine, but an unbeliever will see that as something wrong in this place, right? Right? That's what they would say. Yes. Mm -hmm. Once I eclipse it, but if all prophesy and there come in one that believes not or one unlearned, he is convinced of all. He is judged of all. And thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest. And so falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is in you of a truth. Now, here's the scenario. When you're preaching the word of God, edification, exhortation, and comfort, and everybody is doing that, the unbeliever is going to get so convicted he's going to hear god's word and god's word is going to start to work in their heart and he's going to fall on the ground because somebody's going to prophesy and say you've been you know you've been going through so much you know your, your your chickens don't jump they jump out of the frying pans you know whatever the prophetic word is that person's going to say this is god see but mm -hmm. in tongues in tongues they won't be able to say this is god Right. Y'all say you guys are crazy. Right? But if we were prophesying, speaking intelligently concerning the things of God, his life would be changed. Right? So verse 25, now watch it. And thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest. And so falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is in you of a truth. Verse 26. How is it then? Here we go, brethren. When you come together, every one of you has a song, has a doctrine, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation. All he says this, let 
all things be done unto edifying. Right? If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two or the most, by three, and that by course, and let one interpret. Right? But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church and let him speak to himself and to God. When do you hear? Watch it. Watch it, Paul. We're going to make it make sense here. Watch it. Wendy, I need to bother you. Wendy, are you there? Come in, Wendy. Wendy, are you there? Can't bother Wendy. I got to bother Darlene. All right. We're in church. Right? We're at 68 Storms Avenue in Jersey City. Service is going on. Darlene just jumps up. There's a whole bunch of unsaved people. Darlene just jumps up in her seat and screams out in tongues. Donovan jumps up and interprets. Everybody's blessed. Next Sunday, Donovan's not there. Darlene jumps up in tongues. Nobody interprets. Nobody's blessed. What does the pastor tell Darlene? Don't do that again unless you have interpretation because it's going to throw people off. So if you do feel like you need to speak in tongues, speak to yourself, to God, right? Oh, yeah. anybody hear me? Amen. Yes. They, they want to change it. It says, but if there be no interpreter, let them keep silence in the church, right? Don't yell. It didn't say don't speak in tongues. It said don't yell. And let him speak to himself and to God. Because, but, but, you know, speak in tongues to yourself and to God. See, but they want to, they want to say this. Let him keep silent in the church. There is no way where this is saying don't speak in tongues. It's just saying don't blurt it out. Don't blurt it out unless there's an interpreter. See? Any, anybody hearing this or no? Yes. Oh, same yeah. Man. Oh, yeah. Same man. You see, so it's not don't speak in tongues. It says if you're going to speak and there's no interpreter, just speak to yourself and to God. You know, that's, I, that's, yes. I'm sorry, Pastor. That, that's where, that's where people, you know, they it, it just cuts off of them. It's like you need an interpreter. They preach you know, they don't they don't read past that. <laughs> see, they see you, it's like this. The the person that jumped up and blurted out in tongues needed to have an interpreter. But if there was no interpreter, that person needs to be able to still be able to do it but to themselves and to God. You see? You still Amen. should be able to do it, but you do it to yourself. Yeah, I've seen it plenty of times. I mean, Paul, you do it all the time. I'm preaching, and I see you, your, your mouth moving in tongues while I'm preaching. You ain't, praying, you ain't praying. You're speaking. But you're not jumping up. Jump up! All right. So, let, you know, be silent. But speak to himself and to God. So you see, there's he's, there's a decent way to do it. You don't just tell them don't do it. You do it just the right way. I hope y'all can see this. Amen. Amen. And, but but there but there. See, Satan wants no tongues. He does not want any spiritual influence other than himself in the church. He wants to influence people. He don't want you speaking in tongues. He don't want you talking directly to God. All right. Where are we? We're almost finished, right? But he's, you know, Paul's going to blow it. You know, he's a blessing here, but he's about to blow it. Watch this. Let the prophets, right? Let the prophets speak two or three and let the other judge. So now Donovan, whoever else, 
have a prophetic gift, Paul, Rachel, you know, if you are called to the prophetic and you believe you've got a word, a prophetic word, there's you come down and you give that prophetic word, right? And verse 29 says this, let the prophet speak two or three and let the other judge. So when you have a word, somebody should judge it. I remember somebody, you remember we got the, Darlene and Dashell, you remember when somebody gave us a word that we were supposed to merge our church with somebody else? You remember that? Yes. <laughs> and people got all excited. No, no. <laughs> That's not God's will. No, no. Everybody was excited. No, no. This just wasn't the will of God for this church. Some other churches can do that, but not here. We only have one pastor. We don't have shared pastorates. But then you have competition. Then people be like, who's preaching today? Right? Amen. Yes. Yes. Yep. Ready? Here we go. For all, for you may all prophesy. So you ask that guy, do you prophesy? You don't speak in tongues, but do you? Do, does your church allow people to prophesy? Okay. For you may all prophesy one by one, that all may learn and that all may be comforted. Verse thirty-two. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. I was talking to um, Deacon Donovan at dinner yesterday, and I was sharing with him, whenever you say anything, if you're repeating with somebody else, make sure you use their name. Make sure you use some, if you're, if you're gonna quote anything that's not a revelation, directly from God to you and you got it from somebody else put their name out there give them credit for it because when people come to attack tell them to go attack the, the other person <laughs> yeah that's right uh, you know because when you say certain things everything you know ain't right you know, sometimes, you know, we say stuff and people want to come back at us on it. I had a word of knowledge for a person and it didn't come to pass. And they called me a false prophet. Yeah. But I think what I said was still true. It was comforting and it was edifying. Here we go. We're almost done. Ready? For God is not the author of a confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. Ready? Y'all, we can finish there, right? But we, yeah, need to, yes, but, we, mm -hmm. but we need to look at this next verse. Excuse me, but we need to look at this next verse because Paul just starts going off the rails. He starts to lose it after this. He says, let your women keep silent in the churches for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience as also save the Lord. Wendy. See this, Wendy? You got to get, get your hair covered and stop talking in church. <laughs> Rochelle, get your hair covered. Darlene, I don't want to hear your mouth no more. Why nobody laughing? Why nobody emojiing me? Oh, I was laughing, Pastor. I just did emoji. So you see, this is where Paul went Jewish on him. He went full, what's that, what's that, um, he went postal. You see this, Paul? This is the Apostle Paul going postal on him. He pulled out his, yeah. he yeah. pulled out his Jew, right? He pulled out his Jew card here. He said, I'm going to put these people in check. The women keep silent, just like the law says. I had somebody arguing with me on Facebook. And I, I, yeah, I know these people don't know the word of God. I showed this to them, they shut right up. Well, that most churches, most governments, most religions are doing this to women. Let your women keep silent in the church. Come on, Paul. 
bro, because she's female, she can't talk. You anybody here? Yes. Anybody yeah. Here? yeah. If they learn mm -hmm. anything, let them ask their husbands at home. For it's a shame. Look at what he said. For it's a shame for women to speak in the church. This is the same dude that said it's a shame for men to have long hair. Yeah, but he switches the script uh, later on, right? And later on, as he, yeah. he as he understands better. There's neither male nor female in Christ. Yes, amen. Hair coverings? No, we're not contentious. You know, so, but people can't see that. They can see this, and then once they see this and they preach this, the person that heard this will preach this. He won't preach the whole council. Mm -hmm. And that's where, you know, that's why we have so much division and strife and no power in churches. But anyhow, we're talking about the importance of the word of God in our lives. Did anybody receive anything? Amen, yes. Amen.